In today's video, we are going to learn how to use Power Automate to get the exchange rate between two currencies using an online API. We will set up a flow that checks the rate daily and send a notification in Teams if it meets a favorable condition. Here in the screen, you can see the schema of what we are going to do. We can see that we have something that's scheduled that we'll call a Power Automate flow and it will use an HTTP request to call the API. If you don't know what it is, we are going to see soon. If the rate is below a certain limit that we are going to set up in the flow, it's going to send a notification on Teams. Okay, for those who don't know what an API is, it's just a service that we can call. Basically, we call an URL passing some parameters and it will return some data to us. We just need to parse and analyze that data to use the information we received. Doing some search in the internet, I found this API that has a free tire in this RateDB website where we can call a URL. Here, for example, we have this example that converts between euros and pounds. So we basically call this link. If I paste here in my browser, we see that we called the link and we got this data back. This data gives the conversion between the currencies. I could call and here I can change the currencies in the URL. For example, now it's euro and pounds. But if I wanted to convert between euros and USD, I just change the two parts and now I get the conversion. So we are going to implement this in our flow and use the result to activate actions and in this case, it's going to be sending a message on Teams. So let's get started creating our flow from scratch. I'm going to go to Power Automate and here I'm already inside a solution. If you don't know what a solution is, I will let some videos recommended in the description so you can watch that to understand what a solution is. You can also create from the Power Automate start screen but it's recommended to create inside a solution if you have this opportunity. So I'm going to go to New, Automation, Cloud Flow, and choose a scheduled flow. If you are in the Power Automate home screen, you have the option to create the scheduled flow from there. It's a scheduled because I want to program this flow to run every day. So for example, I can set up the flow to start today, repeat every week, and tell the flow that I just want to run from Monday to Friday. By doing that, I just set everything that I need and it will run every day doing the actions that we are going to program now. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call it Obtain the Exchange and Notifies on team, Teams. Okay, let's click on Create and it's going to create our flow. Here it created a flow using the old design but I want to add it in the new design. Maybe when you create, it will already be the new design. Microsoft is updating this interface. I'm going to add a new step, just a compose action, so I can save the flow and then go back and reopen in the new interface. Just selected compose under the data operation and I'm just typing something here. Okay, now I can click on save, it will save the flow and I can go back and reopen the flow. I'm going to click here on back. I'm back inside the solution. The flow should appear, it's here. If I click again on it, it will open the flow details page. I just click on edit. And now I'm expecting to see the new interface. And here we are. Let's start configuring it. So as we just saw, we need to call that API to get the results back. And to do that, I'm going to add here an action, that's the HTTP request. So let's add a new action and search for it, HTTP. It's under the HTTP connector and we have this HTTP action. Once I click on it, I can then configure the URL that we need to call, that in this case is the one I just demonstrated, converting from euros to another currency, in this case I'm using dollars. So let's do this one. Let's copy it. Basically, I just got it from the examples in the API page. Going back to Power Automate, I'm going to paste here in the URI. This will do the API call. It's the same thing as opening the URL. And once we do that call, we will get this result back. That's the JSON that contains its data. 
the method will be get. I just saw it in the API page. It says it's a get method. That's the method that's usually used for retrieving data from APIs. And we don't need to enter any headers or queries or body. This is a very simple one. You may have a different API that needs to add some things to the headers or in the body. But then you need to look at the documentation. In this case, it's as simple as calling the URL. Okay. Then it's configured, and if I call it, I will get the result back. Since I have the compose that I just added for saving the flow, I could put here in the inputs of the compose the output of the previous connector. I just need to click on this icon, on this lightning icon, and here I can access the results of the HTTP connector. We have body, headers, and status codes. I want the body because that's the result that the API will give me with the rates. Once I click on it, it's added to the input, and now I can publish and test. We still didn't finish the flow, but I like to keep testing while I'm developing it, so I know that's working. I just don't do all the flow and start testing. I go step by step testing it. Now we, we are going to test and see if the HTTP call is working properly. So just clicked on publish and now I'm going to click on test once it's published. Clicking on tests, we can select manually and click on tests and then run flow. Done. Let's just wait for the flow to run. It already did. We can see that it was triggered. Even though it's a recurrency flow, we can trigger any time when we are testing. So we see it working. Then it did the HTTP calling that URI. And the outputs here, here we have the body. See, we got the same results as we have when we call the API through the browser. The conversion from euros to dollars. We also have the headers, but we, we don't need that. And we have the status code, that's 200, it means success. If I look at the compose output, we also have the data here, because we put the body from the HTTP here in the compose just to be able to visualize what was the result. Okay, now I need to extract this conversion rate. How can I do that? Well, I said that this is called JSON and we need to parse it. So we have an action that's called parse JSON. Let's copy this output because we need to have this output to provide a sample data for that action so it understands what's the structure of the body that the HTTP call is returning. Let's click on edit and I'm going to add an action called parse JSON. Let's search parse JSON. Here under data operation, we have parse JSON. Now I just need to provide the content. The content is the body from the HTTP call. So let's select it. And we need to provide the schema. How is the schema of this JSON? Let's click on use sample payload payload to generate schema. So basically we just need to paste the body here. That's also called payload. I'm going to paste it. And once I click on done, it will analyze it. And now it already understands what's the schema. It sees that we have a property called data. That's an object. And inside we have the dates. This will understand what's the structure. And then in the next actions, I can use all these properties to access the information that's inside it. For example, now in the compose, if I wanted just to get the rates, I can remove this body that I just added, click here, and then see from the parse JSON, we have the body, the dates, the from, the USD, the rates, and the data. In this case, we want to access the USD parameter, the USD key. It will, it will have the conversion rate. So I'm going to access body, I'm going to select body USD. Now if I run, we are going to see that in the compose, we will have exactly this value here. That's the conversion rate. Let's test it and see if it's working. I'm going to test. Once I click on tests manually, it will publish and test. So I don't need to click on publish and then test. Let's see, it's publishing. Now it's ready to run. Let's click on run flow. The flow started. We can see that it called the HTTP again. Now in the parse JSON, 
it did its things, analyzed the data, and in the compose, we can even see in the output that we have the body, and now we have each of the keys extracted. The body USD is here and is 1089. If I expand the compose now, that we just added the body USD, we can see the value here, 1089. Now we can use these outputs in the compose to add a condition, to add a test here. For example, we can set a comparison between this value and the ideal value. And wh when it's bigger than the ideal, let's say one euro buys $1.09, then the rate is favorable. And we want to notify on Teams that the purchaser for, from the company should purchase the items that are missing in the inventory, for example. Or we just want to notify that the rate's not favorable, asking him or her to wait a little bit. Let's do this condition so we can call the Teams action. Okay, let's go to Edit. And now I'm going to add a new action that's under the Control action. And here we have the condition. So we want to test the condition. See that we have true and false. So if the condition that we put here in this configuration in the parameters are true, we are going to execute what's in here. If it's false, we are going to execute what's under the false branch. Let's add the condition. So here I want to check if the body USD, for example, is greater than 1.09. In case this gives a true result, we are going to run what's inside true. So let's go and configure it. I'm going to add an action that's under the Teams, Microsoft Teams, it's right here. And it's sending a message, post message in a chat or channel. I'm going to select it, and now I'm going to configure the message that I want to send when the condition is true. Let's keep post as flowbot, post in a chat with flowbot, so it's going to be a chat with my user and the flowbot. The recipient, I'm going to select my email, and the message, in this case, it's a favorable condition. So I'm going to write a message. The euro to dollar rate is, then I'm going to select the rate here again, body USD time. It's time to buy the missing items from stock. Okay, so you're going to send a message when the condition is favorable saying that it's time to buy the missing items. Basically, that's it. It's already configured. Now we need to configure the message in case the condition is false. We can copy this and paste in there, so we don't need to configure everything again, the recipient, for example, and part of the message. So let's right click on it, copy action, and then here under the false branch, let's click on this add icon, paste an action. Now it's just pasted, we just need to change the message content. It's showing the euro rates. And now let's write something different. Let's wait a little more. That's it. Now the flow is complete. It's getting the data from the API, checking against a condition, and doing different actions based on the condition. Let's test it and see what we will get manually publish and tests just waiting for it to publish now i can run the flow done it's running okay so it run now we got the output 1089 which was below 109 so it's false it's not time to buy yet and it sent the message to my teams if i look at my teams now i can see that i received this last message here that says the euro to USD rate is 10885. Let's wait a little more. If we had got anything higher than 109, it would send the other message. This is a simple flow. We, we can still test things here. For example, if the HTTP actually worked, if not, we can do some action just to warn the user that the API is not working, for example, or the developer. And we could also have this parameterized, this value that I added in the condition. It, it can be a variable. It can come from a list, from SharePoint list, from an Excel file or a database, somewhere that's configurable. In this case, it's configured 
right inside the flow. It was just a simple flow to show the basic structure. So you can still improve more and more this flow and, re and use it in other situations and with other APIs. If you think this is useful and that you could learn and benefit from it, leave a message in the comments and also provide more ideas so I can explain how to do another things with Power Automate or Power Apps. If you really, really enjoyed and you want to help the channel, we have the members area. With a small contribution every month, you can help me build more content here in this channel. Now I'm going to leave you with a suggested video so you can keep learning about the platform. So see you in there. Do you want to watch the classes without any interruptions? By becoming a channel member, you can watch ad-free and support the future of my content creation. Check out the link in the description and in the pinned comment to get started. See you in the next lesson.